Greetings, and welcome to episode 18. In this episode, we'll be discussing how do we pray. Some people don't know the proper way to pray. It isn't just words, and I'm going to explain how you do it properly, and why even in the Bible it says prayer is a private matter between you and your connection to Source, or God, or the hologram, or whatever it is you call it. You ready? Let's get started. Sit back, relax, and enjoy. So, how do we pray? Like I said before, it isn't just words. It's more of a feeling. Right there in the heart chakra. And for those of you that don't know what the chakras are, there are plenty of people that have already made videos on chakras. And you can find those videos. My video on chakras is not going to be for a while because uh, right now we're just doing the basics. Starting with the basics. Uh, presenting new concepts for those of you that don't know these concepts. <sighs> oh, excuse me. And then presenting the, the heavier stuff as we go along. Because when you first learn to swim, you don't want to jump in the deep end of the pool. It's not so much that it's dangerous, but you might become lost, confused, and give up. And that's not what I'm trying to do. I want you to be comfortable in starting, even if you're starting from scratch, or if you're rebuilding the, a kingdom that you already built, but no longer serves you. Then you're in the right place. All right, praying is not unlike meditating, but you don't need to know how to meditate to pray. Like I said, it's a feeling. It's in your heart chakra. It is one of the most powerful of your chakras. It is not the most powerful one. I would say if there was going to be rated a powerful chakra, would be one of the most powerful would be the crown but there are more than just the seven chakras they extend up like a ladder and as you evolve you slide up that ladder not only that but that line isn't the only chakras you have chakras throughout your entire body these are just the main ones we need to focus on when we're at the beginning of our journey but like I said that's for a different time so we're praying when I pray I do meditate but that's just because I try to stay in a meditative state non-stop 24 hours a day well except for when I'm sleeping but then while I'm drifting off to sleep I'm meditating How do you pray? Focus your words. Whatever you were going to say, whatever that feeling draws up, if, you, if it's a request, if it's uh, a blessing for someone, whatever it is you're praying for, if you're just saying thank you for the new day and the fact that that's one more day for people to have a chance to start doing things properly, whatever it is you're praying for, Whatever feeling those words would evoke, feel it. Go ahead and feel it, and then project that out. Just project it out. Out, up, in, everywhere. That's how we pray. Well, how come my prayers don't get answered? A lot of times when your prayers don't get answered, it's because you're just using words. And you're focusing on the words you're saying instead of focusing on how it makes you feel to speak those words or even to think those words your heart puts that into motion and I don't mean the actual organ I mean the energy associated there with with that organ the heart chakra like I said you don't have to know how to meditate to pray I believe in my experience 
that knowing how to meditate enhances that and it's not hard to learn how to meditate the hardest thing about meditating that I've ever encountered is finding a pleasurable or not even pleasurable what's the appropriate word for what I'm trying to say a, a pleasing a pleasing frequency to set my meditation to because you can set your meditation to anything mechanical light natural light music uh, I can set my meditation to anything any sound I've ever heard or any sound that you can explain to me sufficiently that I can feel what you feel when you're at that frequency hell I've I used to smoke pot when I was younger I've set my meditation to what it used to feel like to smoke pot before and yes it'll make you feel high if you're doing it properly so now we're praying and we're feeling it we're not just saying the words and as you keep praying and you're focusing it out and in and you're not just a reflection of yourself you're a reflection of the feeling you understand the feeling it invokes you you become that even if you're not meditating you become that and then it just it consumes you and that that feeling of joy is the response well, I'm not getting that feeling of joy then you're there's something you're not doing right something you're missing feel it think of the words even say the words but it isn't just the words how did it feel when you thought about praying about that because we already have an idea of what we're gonna pray about before we even sit down to pray or kneel down to pray however you pray we already have it in our heads what request what question whatever it is we're doing we already have it in our head when we're doing it. Did it make you feel excited, Giddy? Uh, did it make you just feel good because you're wishing good things on others? That's the feeling you bring. That's the feeling you focus on. That's the feeling you expand on and reflect in, out, everywhere, and become. And then when that feeling of joy enters into you, that's your answer. I've noticed that praying for others gets a quicker response than praying for yourself also I've learned that praying out of desperation sometimes helps <laughs> like when something really bad happens yeah <clears throat> but uh, prayer, I've never had a prayer that went unanswered but most you have to understand most of my prayers are questions not blessings, not requests, but questions. <clears throat> See, if you keep it simple, instead of bring me a million dollars, how about how do I make a million dollars? Instead of feed so and so, they're hungry, how about how can I be put in a position where I can feed them without putting myself too far out? Questions get answered before requests. Try that out first. I'm not saying never make requests. The universe isn't at all stingy. At all. But it's easier to take baby steps and build up to getting that request. So ask questions first. And then build up. You'll start to see, okay, my questions are getting answered. That was pretty cool. And pretty quick. Now start making requests. But see, then you, 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 you bear the, the weight of responsibility of knowing how to request certain things. Even when you ask a question, when I'm praying and I'm asking a question, you have to word it properly or else the answer is kind of jar garbled and doesn't make any sense because my, I found like when that happens to me, my question when I was praying, thinking back, didn't make much sense and had I worded it just a little bit differently it would have made sense it's kinda like 
any of you that have children will understand this. When your kid comes up and asks a question, and you're like, huh? It makes perfect sense to them, but huh? What? That's what you're dealing with. The universe is centuries old, and we are children in the face of that. And so if, we're, if we want to speak to an adult and get our requests fulfilled, we need to know how to explain what we're after. Even if it's just questions, we still need to word the question properly. Because the one thing I found out about the journey, walking the path, is it's not about having all the answers. It's about having all the right questions and having them properly worded. Try it out. But as you're trying it out, try out the questions first. Come up with a question. It can be any silly little question. Do mice fart? You'll get you'll get an answer. <laughs> you will get an answer. But you have to be speaking from here. You also have to be listening from here. Also be listening in here. Because sometimes it's a flash of a picture. Because they can only, if they're going to speak through here, or here, they can only use your psycholinguistics to do that. Or your emotional linguistics to do that. In other words, they have to figure out a way, through your own experiences, explain to you at your level so that you'll understand it. And they'll, they won't just answer you once. Because they'll answer you. And if you don't get your answer, that's because they lacked the facilities to answer you like an adult an adult tries to answer the child and they're at a loss because I want to answer your question but it's a little complicated for someone of your level of understanding and I'm just gonna give you the simplest answer possible and the kid isn't satisfied because they still don't understand and that's what happens to us so if the kid words the question properly or even differently you can figure out a way to structure the answer to fit the better formulated question. The same thing goes with requests. Formulate the request properly. Because the old adage, be careful what you wish for, you just might get it, that goes the same for praying. Because if you don't, if you're not clear about what you're praying for, what you receive will be equally as unclear. I want a million dollars. Okay, poof, million dollars. But six people you know that were close friends had to die to get you that six dollar that 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 million dollars because you didn't word it properly. You just said million dollars. And the universe said, Huh, well, I see in your circle of friends these people have X amount of money and they all just happen to make you their beneficiary on their insurance, and if I kill them all, you'll get a million dollars. The universe has nothing against these people, but you made a request, and you weren't very specific, and poof, there's a million dollars. Hmm. Perhaps I should be a little more careful when I make a request. Say, I would really like a million dollars, but I don't want anyone to get injured or hurt in receiving that million dollars, and I don't want it to be a theft way more clear and the universe will look and say hey he's their beneficiary and that's just about a million dollars if I killed all these people but he also said no one gets hurt killed and it's not a theft so can't be done it's not that you didn't get your answer or didn't get your request fulfilled it's that with the criteria you give it is impossible to get you what you want just poof free money out of the sky. Unless of course you ask for a poof free money out of the sky and then the sequence of events has to be perfect. A plane has to be flying over your house at the exact moment that the hatch breaks and the debt bag with a million dollars gets sucked out and then the trajectory has to be just right so that that bag lands where you're at and not somewhere else. So you, when you ask for things like that, you're asking a lot. Think about that for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so
So just go easy on the requests and word them properly. The ones that will get fulfilled the fastest are wishing good things on others or praying for others and asking questions. Because let's face it, the way the universe works is math. And the math just might not fit. I mean, there could be, and I guarantee you, there's probably once a year where if you made a request on that day, all the math would be perfect to get whatever you asked for. Now, the trick is find out what day of the year that is. Is it your birthday? Is it Christmas? I mean, it could be any one of the 365 days in our year that the math is perfect and you'll get whatever you want. It could be once a century. It could be this or that or the other. But speaking in terms of mathematics, that day does happen. Where if you make a request on that day, it happens. And it'll happen for anyone that knows to make the request. Or maybe it's per person. Everyone's day is different. But mathematically speaking, at least once in your lifetime, there has to be a day where the math is just perfect. That if you make a request, you'll get what you ask for. But for the rest of us, for the rest of the time, the math ain't right. <laughs> so try to be less selfish. And if you're praying for, well, I got to get that job. Now, see, that's simple. That's not something that's earth shattering, got to have mathematics. That's something you've applied for a job, probably already will got the interview, or maybe you're preparing to get the interview. That's an easier request to fulfill because all you're doing is telling the universe, could you make sure they give me a shot? Ah, done. Done. Because it, it's no skin off anyone's nose that you got a shot. None. Nobody gets hurt. Nobody suffers. Now, if you get the job, that's different. But who's to say you would or wouldn't have gotten the job in the first place? <laughs> Excuse me. So when you're praying, be careful and be specific. It matters. It matters because your request is according to your language that you speak. And every human on the planet speaks a different language than the next guy. We've all said it. We are, we've all seen it. Where you're in your circle of friends. You've had this circle of friends since high school. But you'll say something and they're like, huh? Or, or they'll say something and you're like, what are you talking about? Because everybody has their own separate version of the dialect that we speak commonly. And that goes for every language spoken on earth. Because we all have our own unique perspective and our own reality. So that means we have to be mindful not to make a request in somebody else's language. We have to be mindful not to ask questions in somebody else's language. Because when they answer you, they're going to answer you in the language you requested the information in. Or the, the, the blessings or the gifts or whatever it is you were praying for. If you word it the way I would word it, you're going to get the answer the way they would have answered me. Hmm. So make sure that it comes from your heart your vocabulary, your mind. <clears throat> it's not that much of a stretch. And like I said, you don't need to know how to meditate to do it. Just feel and let yourself feel and let yourself be consumed by that feeling. Don't just spread it out. Let it fall in and reflect out and then reflect back in and then when that joy comes to you when that 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 overwhelming sense that ah, this it feels really good to be praying yeah that's your that's part of your answer that's the first part of your answer that's like message received like if you were to send a fax that's your confirmation letter so that's step 1 step 2 is knowing how to pay attention Knowing to look for things that weren't there a minute ago in here, 
in here. Oh, that thought coincides with the question I asked, and it's in the form of an answer. Could be your answer. Oh, I'm feeling like I felt that one time when I asked a question and got my answer, but I didn't like the answer. That's the universe telling you, you're not going to like the answer. <laughs> I'm just speaking to you on my experiences. This is how it comes to me because this is how I interact with the universe. I know how this thing can feel. I know how to receive and give messages. So I that's how I get and receive my messages. Like I said, sometimes it's not even in me. Sometimes it's external. Attention will be brought to something that alludes to the question I asked. And there's no denying it. And if you deny it, you're just telling the universe, I don't like the answer. So I'm going to keep pretending like that's not the answer. The universe will keep trying to get you your answer, even if you don't like the answer. But eventually it's going to give up and you're going to say, oh, the universe never answers my prayers. When really you just didn't like the answer you got. I say the universe. It could be God. It could be source. Whichever you decide to call it. I prefer to call it source. Because it is the source from which my little sliver of hologram was peeled and placed. And it doesn't bother me <clears throat> to call it that other than God. God seems not like what the universe actually is. It seems the term God seems limiting. So I say source because even the word God is within source. <laughs> Do you understand? It's to me, gods live in the universe. So if source, the creator, is all, then gods are not source. That's, in, that's my opinion. So the God, the Christian God, the Jewish God, the Muslim God, the Hindu gods, all the gods that we classically portray as white-bearded, robed figures or blue-skinned, multi-armed figures, these are source. And any God other than that is a, is a God. But source is not God. Do you understand? I'm getting off track. So back on track. Back on track to praying. You don't even have to pray from this chakra. You can pray from any chakra. As long as you know how to feel from each chakra. You can light them all up at once and feel from all your chakras. Or just shut them all down and feel from one. Most people that don't know about chakras only feel from the one, which is fine. It's perfectly fine. Uh, a certain amount of empathy is involved in receiving answers. You have to be able to feel as well as to give feeling. That's why I say it's important to reflect inward. If you can feel it, then the universe can feel it. And if you can feel, then you can feel your answer in return. Otherwise, you'll, it'll be completely external and it'll be 50-50 external and in here. You're cutting yourself off from a third way of receiving your information. <coughs> because if you're not letting anything in, then I can only speak to you through here and through all the outward expressions and some people never really learn to pick up on that on the outward stuff why am I focusing on this phone they don't make the connection between the question they asked and something constantly drawing their attention that I know you know I'm not expecting a phone call so and so's you know and so what they'll do is because they're not in tune with themselves they'll pick up the phone and call out the friend were you gonna call were you gonna call Is someone in trouble blah 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 no well, then I wonder why I was thinking about my phone. And they will never make the connection between something making them focus on their phone and the question they asked. <clears throat> Same with the message coming in here. Well, I, I, I just, I couldn't get that one 
my favorite cup out of my head. I couldn't get the cup out of my head. It just was there. I just and I never made the connection between the picture of the cup flashing in my head over and over and the question I asked. So you have to know how to pay attention to see the things that weren't there before. I don't ever think about my favorite cup until I want to put something in it. So if suddenly I can't keep my mind off my favorite cup, that's a message from somewhere, from someone, from something. Now, think back. Was I meditating? Was I praying? Did I ask any questions? Okay. The association is made. Now I can figure out where in my linguistics that my favorite cup falls. Same with outward. Well, yeah. If you make the connection, okay, I have never, as long as I've owned my phone, I've never just suddenly had to focus on it, had to focus on it, had to focus on it, ever. So if suddenly that's the case, then maybe it's something trying to tell me something. Something is purposely drawing my attention to that. Why? Make the connection. If you're missing this one, that's one less place to try and for the universe to try to make a connection with you and say, hey, hey, look over here. Hey, hey, look over here. Remember that one feeling? Because feeling is very powerful. A feeling that the universe can take that feeling and take you back to a situation that fits exactly the question you asked, but you're so far removed from it that it, it just didn't come to mind when you were thinking about the question. So the universe says, hey, think about this. And maybe it's a string of emotions to have a string of memories click so that you can string these together and say, well, what does that mean? Well, only you know that. And the universe is relying on you to know the answer. And if you didn't ask the question properly, then the answer might not make any sense. Because like to the child asking the parent, the child that the parent's trying to give the best possible answer it can based on the question that child asks. And if that child asks a question like I'm used to getting from my kids, huh? What? <laughs> <laughs> it's stammering and stuttering and uh, why maybe uh, <laughs> and that's the answer you're getting and you're like well that doesn't make any sense well your question didn't make any sense to the universe well the, this universe is all knowing yes but think about it comparatively relatively speaking from your point of view to a kid you're all knowing but you can't answer their question you have the answer and you know the answer but you can't answer the question in the way that they asked it. Perhaps, like I said before, if they changed the way they asked the question and worded it differently, you could give them a proper answer. And you will, because I've had my kids come back and ask me questions that they asked when they were even half the age they are now, and now their question makes sense, and now I can answer them. It's that simple. So maybe you're just, it could be a matter of Maybe you answer, you ask the question properly, but maybe you're jumping the gun and you're just not ready for those kind of answers yet. Just maybe. Just maybe. Like uh, my last video, maybe they can't answer your question because you're they're waiting on you to upgrade your operating system to clear out some of those cobwebs from the subconscious so they can answer you because with your old operating system the answer just doesn't make any sense because it doesn't reconcile with what you already know I don't think that the universe is ever going to be wrong ever the day the universe is wrong I think it's time to just pack it in and we're done all of us every species in the known universe we're just done if the universe is ever at a loss for answers, we're done. <laughs> it's just a fact. <laughs> well, maybe not a fact, but that's how I see it. So, you think of how many billions of years the universe has been around, and you are one in seven billion people on this planet. I think it's got your answer. Even if it has to send someone in with the answer. It'll give you the distinct feeling, the distinct impression, and it'll do it on purpose that this person has your answer or stick around, this person's going to answer your question eventually. But this was the best way we knew to get you the answer you needed because of A, the, the way you asked the question. 
and B, your operating system. Perhaps it's just not compatible with the answer and hearing it from another human or teacher or guru or whoever this person is to you, maybe hearing it from them is what's going to put you on track. And then if you take what they say as your answer, then you're already in the process of upgrading your operating system because you'll start to see that, well, you'll ask the questions and I've done it before. And you might not. You might just take what they say with a grain of salt. But when I get to the, ooh, excuse me, when I get to a point like that, and I get the answer, and you get that feeling that the answer came through them, I I want to question that. Well, why did I have to get the answer from a person? And the answer could only be they lacked the facilities to answer because of where I was in my journey. But I still got my answer, so I can't really be upset. I just was expecting more of a personal dialogue. You know what I mean? And you can't just, 7 billion people on the planet, you can't just say, well, where's my personal dialogue? I mean, you are not the only person that the universe is catering to. So uh, I'm in a hurry. They've got your answer. Boom. And then suddenly there's a synchronicity because this person has answers. You have questions. And there's a synchronicity to make you cross paths. Now, how long you stay on the journey with this person is up to either one of you but you will cross paths maybe only long enough for you to ask your question or maybe long enough for you to teach each other something or maybe you just learn or maybe they just learn but it all comes down to the starting position and I don't mean kneeling sitting or standing you can pray any way you like you can pace through your house you can sit lay down stand kneel whichever the starting position is the heart you it, it has to come from your heart you have to feel what you're praying about you have to feel your question you have to feel your prayer for success you have to feel your prayer for healing for whomever for blessings for whomever or even if it's just I want to pray for stuff for me like I said the universe is not stingy Self-interest is frowned upon the higher up you go. But where we're at now, no, the universe is not going to be displeased with any level of self-interest. None. But yeah, that's praying. That's what I learned praying is. And like I said, meditation enhances it. But it is not necessary at all to, to pray properly. All right. We're getting on to the 30-minute mark. And, uh, yeah, I hope, you, I hope you learned something from this. If you didn't know how to pray before and you thought it was just words that the universe hears, then now you know. And if you learned something, please click the like button. You can favorite the video if you want. But if you would like to keep coming back and getting more information, or you just like the sound of my voice, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. But until next time, you hang in there.